What's up everyone? I'll be showing you how to get started making zombie proof chainmail today. Before we start, here are a few things you need. Boom! Look at that list. Look at that list. It's a beautiful list. Gosh, it's beautiful. If you have all these things, let's get started. You'll need bolt cutters for this and have the needle nose pliers on hand just in case. To start, you'll want to hold the spring in your non-dominant hand. I'm holding it in my left. Or place it on the floor or table or whatever other s surface you're working on. You'll be cutting with your dominant hand and make sure to line up the end of the spring with your bolt cutters. This will create a guide for cutting the rest of the rings out. Depending on how long the spring is, how strong your grip is, and how powerful your bolt cutters are, it'll take you around an hour to cut out all the rings per spring. For me, it takes me around an hour to an hour and a half depending on how focused I am and how fast I'm working. The weave I'm working with today is called a 4-in-1 European weave. It's the most common, but if you want to learn how to do other types of weaves, you can visit this link right here. First, you'll want to have one open ring and four closed rings. Put all four closed rings inside the open one and close it so it should look something like this. Sometimes it's easier to create a bunch of these 4-in-1 sets before moving to step 3, but you're, you're the one watching it, so you do you. By now you should have a bunch of these 4-in-1 sets made up, but if you only have 2 or 3, that's something we can work with as well. To start the weave, align two sets, one on top of the other. It's critical to align the rings having the middle rings pointing in the same direction, and it doesn't matter which direction, so whatever works best for you. For this set I'm working with, I have them facing down. Next, you want to take one open ring, position it facing downward or whichever direction you have your rings going, and weave it between the first two rings, as shown, and the last two rings. Once you have that completed, close the ring. As an end result, it should look something like this. It may take some practice, but just keep working with it and trying it from different angles. If you want to or need to, just come back to this video for help. Keep making these chains, and in the next video, I'll show you how to connect them all. Thanks for watching!